Welcome, welcome, welcome to another online service from Freedom Ministries here in Apopka, Florida. Once again, my name is Minister Tony Jenkins. I am one of the associate ministers here, and I want to bring you greetings on this 27th day of December. Wow. We are here on the last Sunday of this year. And what a year has it been? 2020. Man, I just want to thank God for allowing me to be here to allow me to come before you to speak a word that God has given me. I want to thank our pastor, Freddie Fillmore. He's the senior pastor of this ministry. And I want to say that it is a joy and it's a privilege to stand before you today to minister the word of God. You know, as we look back on this year, 2020, a lot of things have taken place in this year. You know, when the year first started, one of the things that happened in January was the sudden tragic death of Kobe Bryant. And then in February, we learned of this virus that had come on the scene. And then in March, the country was shut down because of the Corona virus. I mean, who would have ever thought that all these things that we experienced this year would take place? Nobody saw that coming. But I want to remind you that at the beginning of the year, God had given me a word and it was about 2020 vision. And you know how every time the new year come in, everybody have these slogans and they have these resolutions. But it was not a resolution that God was giving me, because if we were to have a vision, that vision was supposed to be for the next 10 years, not a resolution, because a resolution pretty much only lasts about a month. And then you go back to being who you were. So God was giving me a revelation of a vision of the next 10 years. And who would have ever thought that all these things that we saw in this year, 2020, would take place? However, I want to let you know that there is good news. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, that God is still in control. And that on this last Sunday, God wanted me to remind you that is this what you're going through? Is this what you saw? Because if this is not what you saw, then what you see right now is going to pass. It is called the seesaw effect. And if that is for those who have a vision for the next 10 years, doesn't matter what you're going through right now. God is going to see you through. This is just part of the process because God has given you vision. And in that vision, there is a future. There is a hope. And I want to let you know that God is still in the blessing business. So if you will get your Bibles real quick and you will turn to uh, Genesis Chapter 41, Genesis chapter 41, verses 39 through 44. Genesis chapter 31, 41, Genesis 41, 39 through 44. Let us pray. Father, I thank you once again for this time that we're living in. And God, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That means that no matter what the situation, the circumstance is, God, I will bless your name because you are in total control. And God, you want us to put our trust in you, Lord God. And Father, I thank you for this word that you have given your son to speak to your people right now. And I call it done in Jesus name. Amen. Genesis 41, 39. Through 44. And it reads, Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, 
There is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house. This is Pharaoh now talking. This is the king over all the land. At that time, Pharaoh was the most was the greatest king at that time. And he's talking to Joseph, a Hebrew, someone who was despised, someone who, who was cast out from his family. He's talking to Joseph and he says, you shall be over my house and all my people shall be ruled according to your word, Joseph. Look at God. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. 41. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring. And you got to understand that signet ring represented everything concerning Pharaoh. That means when he put that ring on Joseph, Joseph had all authority because of that signet ring. And everyone in Egypt at that time knew exactly how much power that signet ring carried. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had and he had him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried out before him, bow the knee. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh said also, Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without your consent, Joseph, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. If what you're going through is not what you saw, then what you see is going to pass. God had placed Joseph in a position to where he was in a pit. His brothers had put him in a pit. And then he was sold in slavery to Potiphar. And he rose in great status with Potiphar. And then because of some accusations, he was accused of something that he did not do because of Potiphar's wife. He was put in prison. But that was not what Joseph saw. God had already given Joseph a vision that he was going to be in a position of power that his brothers, his family will bow to him. But at the time, Joseph could not see that. And God raised him up and caused Pharaoh to have a dream that no one could interpret. But Joseph did not see that at the time. I'm telling you, saints, when you have a vision from God, you got to stay with that vision. Because if what you see in now is not what you saw, trust God, because it is going to pass. Now, notice that I said that when God was dealing with me about a vision, God was saying for the next 10 years. When God is dealing with the number 10, the number 10 is symbolic for four things. Number one, it is symbolic of God's authority. Number two, it is symbolic of God's law. Number three, it is symbolic of responsibility. And number four, the number 10 is symbolic of completeness. Remember, God gave the children of Israel 10 commandments. He gave them only 10 commandments. And that number 10 is a sum of the whole. That means if you can 
be responsible, if you can stay to the laws of these Ten Commandments, then you can do anything else that God requires you to do. The number 10 in our numeric system, if a child can count to number 10, that child can count to 100. Why? Because the number 10 is a sum of the whole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then you start over 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. If you can count to the number 10, then you can count to the number 100. God is saying he wants us to be responsible. He wants us to obey his law. He wants us to walk in his authority. He wants us to be complete. Number 10 is symbolic of those four things. God, I want you to say that God required when he told the children of Israel to tithe a tenth. That tenth, once again, was their responsibility. It was their law. It was God's authority. And it was God completeness if they tithe a tenth. That's why he said only tithe a tenth. Because if you can give a tenth, then that tenth represents everything that God has put in your possession. Ten. Let me say this. That no matter what you're going through, you have the ability to walk in God's completeness if you have the vision, the revelation of God. So what are you saying, Minister Tony? What I'm saying is, is that that promotion that you saw, don't get discouraged because you lost your job, because that's not what you saw. Listen, if you lose your house during this pandemic, don't get discouraged because that's not what you saw. If your marriage is on the brinks, don't get discouraged because that is not what you saw. That's what you see. And if what you see is not what you saw, then what you see is going to pass. So stay grounded in God. Vision also is critical for the next 10 years of your life. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision. Listen, where there is no vision. Revision, vision is a revelation. The people perish, the Bible says. That means the people fail. If a husband does not have a vision for his family, that family will fail. If a pastor does not have a vision for his church, I guarantee you that church will fail. And if a government does not have a vision for the country, that country, I guarantee you, will fail. Why? Because the Bible says where there is no vision, the people fail. And what we are experiencing right now in America, the things that we are going through because of this coronavirus is a state of the current administration having no vision. Because where you don't have a vision, you are doomed to fail. Now you see what it looks like when you have no vision. Listen, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3 says this. A prudent man, a prudent man is a man that is wise. A prudent man foresees evil and he hides himself. 
but the simple are passed on and they are punished. A wise man would have saw all this destruction that the COVID virus would have done to our country and he would have gotten out the way or he would have put things in place. He would have foresaw it. But a simple man can't see it. And now people are being punished because the Trump administration had no vision. On February the 7th, President Trump privately told a journalist named Bob Woodward that the coronavirus was some deadly stuff. This is his words in an interview. He said that this virus could be transmitted by air. It was a threat more deadly than the fruit flu. And then President Trump National Security Advisor Robert O'Baron told the president that this COVID-19 would be the largest national security crisis of his presidency. Yet President Trump continued to downplay the threat. Public, public, publicly telling people that, oh, it's just a typical flu. Remember he said that we will be in church on, on Easter? Remember he said that? And remember during the campaign, he said, oh, by November, it'll go away. Well, now over 300,000 people have died because lack of vision. They said that this year, 2020, is the most deadliest year in American history because the current administration had no vision. And I'm telling you, saints, if you don't get a vision for where you want to be in the next 10 years, you will fail as well. God ain't playing. You can't just walk around haphazardly and, and just, just think that life is just, just a merry-go-round. It don't work like that. You must have a vision for your family, for your church, for your, for your, for your business. A business that doesn't have a vision will fail. And I want to say this, that instead of taking responsibility for his failure to get control of this virus, what did the president say? He said, I take no responsibility. And remember, one of the symbolic, one, one of the, 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 the four of the symbolic meanings that I said about number 10 was what? Responsibility. Anyone who is not responsible, that person does not have a vision. So for those who want to point the finger at China, remember the president say, oh, it's China, it's the China virus. Listen, China, as of May, their economy is booming because they required that their people put on a mask. But see, we here in America, we got rights. You are infringing on my rights. You can't make me or force me to wear a mask. Well, you know what? You can also be dead right. Now, I drive a big 18-wheeler. Now, if I'm going down the road and you are coming up to a light and you have the green light, but yet you see my 18-wheeler coming down the road, ain't stopping, and you say, I got a right to cross this light. Well, guess what? You do got a right. But after I hit you, you're going to be dead right. So what are you saying? Put on your mask. The scientists have discovered that the mask will lower the risk of the virus. But you say, I don't trust the science. I don't believe the science. Oh, you believe science. 
Every time you go and you switch on your light in your house, you are believing the science. Every time you take a cell phone and you dial a number and you talk on it, you believe science. So don't tell me that you don't believe science. You only believe it when it's convenient for you. Well, let me tell you something. You better believe the scientists because God has put them on earth for a reason. Again, let me say this. I know this has been a rough year. It's been a rough year. I understand. Some of you lost your jobs. Some of you are about to be evicted. Some of you are standing in food lines. Never would have thought that you would stand in a food line. I know. I understand. But God never promised us that we wouldn't have trouble. He never promised us that. But what he did promise was he said that I will be your refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalms 46 and 1. And then if that's not enough, John 16, 33, Jesus said this. He says, in me, you may have peace. And in the world, you will have tribulations in the world. You will have tribulation. It's going to happen, saints. But this is what he said. But be of good cheer. Smile. Laughter is like medicine. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Jesus said, be of good cheer while you're going through your trouble. He says, because I have overcome the world. Now, let me go back to Joseph. Remember, I started off with Joseph. And I started off saying how Pharaoh had placed Joseph in the most powerful position except when it came to Pharaoh. That Pharaoh gave Joseph his signet ring. But for almost 15 years, Joseph did not see that. Joseph could have given up. He could have thrown in a tower. He could have said, that's enough. God, I'm tired. But every chance that Joseph was given, he rose to the occasion. Because somewhere in the back of his mind, he knew that God was going to bring him through because the pit was not what he saw. The prison was not what he saw. And when Pharaoh had put that signet ring on his finger, that was what Joseph saw. And if you read the chapter and you keep reading, you would know that his brothers finally made it to Egypt. And they bowed before Joseph. And Joseph said this, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Saints, you got to know that it's working out for your good. The Bible says, don't grow weary in well-doing, for you shall reap if you don't quit. You can't quit now. I know it's dark. I know you can't see the way, but you can't quit. It is not over until God says it's over. Hold on, saints. You know, in this church, every Sunday that we came together, we had a uh, 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 confession that we would say. And in that confession, we would say thousands of believers have been added to Freedom Ministry Church, both men, women, and children. And each member is fully committed to the work of the Lord. But right now, I don't see the thousands. Right now, I don't see it. But this is not what the pastor saw. 
So the pastor cannot get discouraged because the church is empty. We haven't had church in almost nine months, but God had given him a vision that thousands will be at it. So the question is, pastor, are you going to trust God? What you saw, or are you going to trust what you see? And I think we already know the answer. The pastor is continuing to move forward because God, just like he rose, raised up Joseph, He's going to raise this ministry up to accomplish everything that God set out for this ministry to be. And let me say this in closing. Sister Libby, I call her big sis. During the time that I was going through a tremendous trial in my life, she gave me a card. And in that card, it said, the glory is not and never have fallen. But the glory is when you have fallen, you get back up. I'm going to say that one more time. The glory is not and never have fallen. See, some people glory because they have never fallen. Some people glory because they have never been evicted. Some people glory because they have never lost a job. They glory. That's not the glory. The glory is when you have lost your job, when you have been evicted, when you have gone through a divorce, is that you get back up one more time. That's the glory. The Bible says a righteous man fall seven times get back up and if Joseph can get back up if Joel can get back up then you can get back up because this is not what you saw this is what you see and the pastor two weeks ago he talked about now faith faith is always now you gotta believe God right now you got to trust God right now that this will pass. Right now. And let me end it with this. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. It says, remember the things of old. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done. And what God is saying, the moment I finish something, then I back up and I start. So whatever God has given you to do, if you started it, it is already finished. And God said that there is no other God like me. So stay grounded, saints. Stay rooted. And let God do the work. Let us pray. Father, I thank you once again for this beautiful word that you have given to encourage your saints not to give up in their tribulations and in their trials. And God, I pray that you will encourage someone and let them know that it is not over, that they still have a work to do. And God, I thank you for using your son to speak a word of encouragement to your people. And have your way in their lives, Lord, as we close out this year, a year of tremendous setback, but yet a year of moving forward. I thank you and I call it done. In Jesus' name, I want to remind you that this Thursday night, we will have our watch night service at 10 o'clock. So we want everyone that can to tune in. We will be zooming in and we will hear from our ministers. We will hear from our pastor about what God is, is, is bringing us to going into 2021. And want to remind you of Bible study and that God is still in control. May God bless you and keep you. And may you have a prosperous and a continuous blessing for year 2021. Thank you. God bless you.